Hi, I'm Mark Boxer with OFS, and OFS's weblog series is called What's New in My World. So today I'd like to talk about rollable ribbon, and if you haven't seen it before, it is this stuff. So it's pretty neat. It collapses upon itself, uh, you know, when it's rolled into a tight cylinder, so we can, can kind of collapse it. It's kind of hard to see that. Uh, and then you can also easily you know, separate it out to pull out an individual fiber. So I'll do that and get a little bit closer. So you can you can see that and then it just snaps back into place so you can splice it again. So it splices like a ribbon. It can be rolled very, very tightly, making it you know just a, a way to get very, very tight density in a very, very small package. So you compare this to a flat ribbon. And so this is a flat ribbon. And so there is no, you know, there is no moving of this or no rolling this without breaking the ribbon. So why this is important really comes back to uh, to geometry. So this is an 864 fiber central tube uh, flat ribbon cable. So if you look at it, you can see that there is a lot of space in between the flat ribbons and the tube. And that's because we've got ribbons that are fundamentally rectangles and the, um, the the cable is fundamentally a circle. And so, um, you know, when you have a circle, you know, and a rectangle, then um, you know, those don't fit that efficiently. So if you look at a rollable version of this cable with 864 fibers, you can see, um, you know, there's not very much space between the fibers and the tube. And let me go ahead and put both of these side by side. And you can see that, you know, this is the flat ribbon 864, this is the rollable 864. Yeah, there's a significant difference in size between the two. So, um, you know, rollable ribbon was dreamed up in Japan back in the 2000s and went through a development path that was actually similar to the SC connector that happened in the early 1990s. And what I mean by that is that NTT in Japan uh, farmed out the concept of various companies who ultimately brought it to market. And so um, for the case of rollable ribbon, uh, OFS's parent company, Furukawa, was one of those uh, you know, companies that um, introduced rollable ribbon, and so we brought it back to brought it to market during the middle part of the 2010s. So there, there's so many benefits to rollable ribbon. You know, we see it in a lot of different environments, and I I call this the buffet of benefits um, using rollable ribbon. So it's small. Uh, so the ribbons themselves are very small; they can be you know, rolled, and so that means that cables can be much smaller and lighter for a given size. That can mean, <laughs> excuse me, smaller uh, ducts, more fiber in a duct, can mean smaller handholds, more uh, cable on a reel for longer lengths or fewer splice points. And then for aerial uh, installations, also since everything's smaller, also less weight on the pole, less amount of ice to, to build up. And so just overall, you know, just smaller in general, and uh, that typically makes things easier. Some customers like it because it can be placed in spl thinner splice trays enabling more trays in a closure or a smaller closures for a given fiber count. And if you look, you know, all of these cables are gel free, so they're easier to prepare for splicing. And of course, these are ribbons, so they're, you know, can be mass fused and spliced 12 at a time. So the initial installations were primarily used to connect data centers together because data centers use very high fiber count cables. You know, think of 1728s, 3456s, and those kinds of things. But what I'm really excited about is the concept of using rollable ribbons in lower fiber count networks, you know, including fiber to the home backbone and distribution networks. And so we've, for those applications, we have typically used you know, loose tube cables in the past because it's easier to pull out an individual fiber to connect a subscriber. No, but now with rollable ribbon, you know, it's easy or easier to pick out an individual fiber versus loose tube. You know, the ribbons are clearly marked. The fiber color is always going to be in the same place. So you just basically pick out whatever you need. So now the cables can be smaller. They can be easier to work with in the field. And if you if you compare these, so these are all what I'm going to show in just a second are 288 fiber count cables. So this is a loose tube so it's it's actually pretty big you know I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can can take a look at that and then i'll hold that up and this is a flat ribbon cable 288 and you can see that it's roughly the same size as the as the loose tube cable so now look at the rollable and so i've got a couple of different versions of this but actually the larger rollable you can see that even the larger rollable is much smaller than either the the loose tube or the the um, the flat. 
And all of these cables are GR20 rated, so you have the same rugged crush uh, impact tensile performance that we've come to rely on for decades. So um, give it some thought for your network. Now, now you can get the benefits of ribbon splicing, you know, when you know when you can use it, or also you know single fiber access. So you can do either either one, um, you know, whenever you, whenever you need either. So it can act as a ribbon. You can also act as a single fiber, and um, you can able basically gives you a lot of freedom to use either either platform in a much smaller package. So overall, we think we're going to see a lot more customers move towards rollable ribbon you know, in their fiber to the home distribution networks now in the future. It'll take a while, but that's what's new in my world today.